Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat's on back order, and it's time for episode 27, I think, of our Pokemon Ultra Sun playthrough here on the channel. Yet another one of our pre-recorded episodes for the week, but tomorrow will be a live stream. I have scheduled for 7 p.m. Atlantic time. Just go onto the, uh, you know, I actually don't know how it works. If you go on just to my channel, does it show when the next live stream is? hope so. Anyway, 7 p.m. Atlantic time, I'm looking to do the live stream, so feel free to tune in for that, but stay tuned for this episode, because in the last episode, we learned some things about the legends of the Alola region. We came with Lily over here to the Mali Library, where she almost got stomped flat by Mudsdale, but she did avoid destruction, and we went inside, found out there's some sort of weird, I don't know, some offspring thing of the two legendaries, and who knows what that could be, you know? We know who it is, but we knew who it was in Pokemon Sun and Moon is the thing. Could things be different this time around? So our next mission is to head up to Route 10 and take the bus to the top of Mount Hokulani. See if we can get ourselves another trial completed. And I was checking the map out. Check this out. I'm really excited to head down this way over here. Because when we head down Route number, what is this, 11? Route number 12. And that's it. We got the next beach spot right down here. I want to see what move tutor moves are going to be available when we get down here. In fact, I want to check something else out too. Where is the surf spot here? Is there a surf spot here on Pony Island? I see a beach. Um, why is there no surf spot? I want move tutors. Maybe... I don't know, maybe they will surprise us. There'll be something here on this little beach area, the Pony Beach. I don't see any little tents where they're going to be teaching us stuff, but we'll find out once we get there. For the time being, we've got to focus on getting ourselves through Route 10 and up the mountain. We did talk to a guy in... Was it in the library? Or was it in the community center? Either way, somebody wants us to capture a mini ore. So I wonder if that's going to be our first encounter on the uh, mountain. And if we can catch it, because they like to blow themselves up, they do. All right, so let's kick things off with our team recap. Seeing who we have to work with here. Almost at level 33 for Candy. Very close to level 33. Our Solanda at level 32 for the time being. I think we might get an evolution or two in this episode. I'm hoping for that. Anyway, uh, ability is Corrosion, holding the Fiery MZ. And the moves are Flame Burst, Venoshock, Toxic, and Nasty Plot. Next is our recently evolved Beauty Fin, the Luminion, at level 32. The ability is Storm Drain, holding onto the Expert Belt, just to add more oomph to super effective moves being Water Pulse and Signal Beam. Also has Captivate and Safeguard. Next is Ghosty, our level 32 Phantom. The ability is Natural Cure. She's holding the Eviolite, and she has Shadow Claw, Bulldoze, Leech Seed, and Will-O-Wisp. Next is Turkey with, look at all those injuries. I'm going to talk about the pink injuries too, the uh, markings underneath the image. Level 32 side up with Cloud 9 ability holding Waterium Z, an Aqua Tail, Signal Beam, Brick Break, and Soak for the moves. Next we have Echo, our level 32 Crobat, with Inner Focus holding Scope Lens, Giga Drain, Poison Fang, Aerial Ace, and Confuse Ray. And last but not least, our starting Pokemon, Robin Hoot, at level 33. Ability is Overgrow, the item is Flyanium Z, and Razor Leaf, Pluck, Ominous Wind, and Synthesis. Alright, so, as you're seeing, some of our Pokemon have some injuries to them. A couple of them are marked with the uh, pink injuries, though. I've been asking. I don't know really what to do with those, because, like, just consider them that they are injuries, but not injuries being counted against the total number of injuries for Pokemon being put away. And I'm still thinking, I don't know what I want to do with them. Unknown Spike suggested maybe count them as, like, an extra life or, like, you know, a free man kind of thing. And I'm like, I could? Like... I don't know what I would do, like, hmm, maybe at some point I'll start cycling back through the Pokemon that we have used in the past, the ones that have been injured, oh, I'm sorry, I'm blocking this guy, I didn't even see you behind me, and I don't know, I had to play it by ear, I still haven't really decided what those are going to count for, maybe, I have one idea that just came to mind, I'll keep it as a secret. Won't spoil it just yet. Now, I'm going to head up this way, because this is another section up here, I believe, where we can get another encounter. Grimer eat garbage. But if they run out of garbage to eat, sometimes they start taking bites out of nearby buildings. We janitors have to use our formidable skills to keep them in check. Sounds... interesting? Very cool. Anyway, so what is this area? 
the outer cape. So this is going to count as a new area. Let's get ourselves an evolution to kick this episode off. How about that? Clean, clean. The fighting style of janitors is also clean. No hitting below the belt, in other words. A nice clean match. No, uh, what would you call it? No griping over who wins, who loses. Critical hits if they happen, so be it. A rubbish comes in. Let us... I was going to say, we can't poison you. Oh, yes, we can with Corrosion. But, being that you are a poison type, Mana Shock will not do that much anyway. So I guess let's start off with that nasty plot. I want to see what this looks like in this game. Pretty much exactly the same thing. That's okay. We have a Sludge, which we resist. You can't poison me, thankfully. So, I was concerned about recording this episode because if you watched yesterday's Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, I mentioned how we've been suffering a pretty massive snowstorm in my region here in Canada. And I've heard a lot of places were running out of power because, like, power lines must have been going down from the high winds and stuff like that. And uh, the uh, power companies have been on, like, high alert for such things. So, I was like, if I start recording this, am I going to lose power at some point and have to completely, like, restart? the recording so like i mean it could still happen but i think we're in the clear the storm i believe is broken right about now not according to pokemon go it is still pretty massively raining and snowing at the same time but spotless now was king of Lytton's correct indeed he was so candy is evolving up so with these pre-recordeds i'm gonna probably wait until yeah, I'll wait till the next episode to update the layout because the way I do the updating, the whole layout would black out and come back and it's just, it just doesn't look appealing. So I hope you don't mind the layout not changing immediately, but we'll get it updated as we get a Salazzle on our team. We finally have a totem Pokemon of our very own, not counting the uh, Gumshoes and Marowak that we were given by Alolan Oak. Alright, another entry for the Pokedex. Another reason I want to come up here to the root, uh, the outer cave, is because, well, I'll tell you in a minute, as we talk about Salazzle, the toxic lizard Pokemon. Salazzle lives deep in caves and forces the Salandit it has attracted with its pheromones to serve it. Isn't that lovely? Look at this, like, just bring me the food. Bring me your evolutionary nourishment. I'll take it all and then smack you with it. That's mean. I like the, uh, the animations, though. They're pretty cool. All right. So, we have... Oh, wait, want to learn a new move. Captivate. Hmm. We gotta get Captivate on Beautyfin, who's also female. I don't think we need Captivate. We're good with the moveset that we have. We'll call it good there. Yeah, it's interesting that I went with Venoshock now that I think about it, because let's say we do, like, use the Corrosion ability and poison anything with Toxic. Venoshock then is resisted by poison types who can be poisoned, and Steel type is immune to Venoshock, so it's like, mm. I guess Venoshock might not be the most useful in this case, but whatever. We'll keep it for the time being. Oh, she holds it in her hands. It's so cute. Now, do you still like your fingers getting tickled? As weird as that sounds. No, hang on. Where do you like to be petted at? Right on the head. All right. That we can do. Got it used to my uh, new Pokemon's favorite spots. So she's not maxed out just yet, but she's pretty close. But we got Salazzle. Very cool. Now, I think I might be wrong on this, but maybe Turkey is almost about to evolve too. Congrats on your Pokemon evolving. You know what this case calls for? Some awesome photos. Yep, I want to get a photo. Good idea. Now, I did take a photo of Beautyfin when, uh, well, off camera. After she evolved, I think I'll show you that. But hang on, let's do a quick little photo here. I'm learning a bit better how to set things up here. So what background are we going to want? It wasn't in the Mali Garden that you evolved, but I don't think we're going to see the uh, outer cape here. Let's just try Route 8. It's kind of similar. I guess that'll be good enough. Alright, so let's start this photo shoot. We're going to rotate the camera. First of all, I love to get like the, the ground angle like that so you can see the background. Uh, where will we put you is the question. Oh, you got a lot of space to move around. So it can barely move. Hmm. Here's what I'm thinking. Let's move the camera. Like this. Now see if I can angle myself the proper way. 
There's no room to turn that way. Okay, that's great. And let's move our Salandit first of all, or Salazzle, sorry. And let's move you back over here. We're gonna rotate you as well. Or not yet, hang on. I said I'm gonna speed through this. I'm wasting time. I think that looks good the way you're looking here. Let's move you as close as we can to give you maximum space. And there we go. Now, like, why can't we move our trainer around? If I could push myself to the back, plenty more space for the Pokemon. Oh well, so let us angle the camera more towards the Pokemon. There we go. And are we zoomed in good? I think we're probably good. Let's go like this and then zoom up a little bit. So I'm going to be sort of an afterthought in this video, or this photo. So what animation should we do? I'm going to do the fire. Just check this out. Play it, and I'm going to wait for the uh, pose when I'm doing my, my hand forward. Like that. So in that case, I'm actually going to move the camera slightly and angle it somewhat to the both of us. Now, as for Candy herself, see what your animations are. That's kind of cool. Kind of like that, too. Now, I wonder if I can get one where she's like, her hand is up the way mine is. I'm going to try that. Hang on. The trick here is you don't know what animation she's going to do until you've already pushed the animation button. So what I'm going to do is try and luck out, see if I can get the same pose when she's slapping. That's not quite... See how her uh, fingers and toes flare up there, too? That's pretty neat looking. Look at that. Fire everywhere. Now do the hand slap. Work with me, Candy. Let's see if we got one that's good. Alright. Not quite. <laughs> so, in that case, which one looks the best? Hmm. Kind of like the standing up pose. Oh, I'll keep this one. Wait, I want to keep this and this one. Whoop. This and this one. I'll keep those two. And we'll say that's good for the photo. Is satisfied. Nice. All right, so we're gonna quit this. I'll show you Beauty Finn's photos as well, since well, we got some time here. Oh, we gotta take our Roto Lotto too. We get a lot of these lately. I've got two egg hatches, Roto hatches. We get ourselves berries. Looks like. Or is this the healing? It's amazing power. Roto HP restores. Those will come in handy. So it only restores your active battling Pokemon. Is the thing. All right, quick little check of the photo album. I'll show you Beauty Finn, and then we'll get moving. So I want to get myself a new Pokemon. So here's our Luminion. You can see on the top screen, kind of blocking my face. But I like how the fins light up. You see that? Like the blue really shines. I like that one, though. So you can see both our Pokemon, and I'm just like, you know, oh, it's so cute. Oh, it's adorable. So anyway, show you the photo. Okay, let's continue. Let's get uh, Turkey in the active spot. See if we can get another evolution, maybe. See so if I can do only do one layout edit in one go here. Now, I don't know when Robin Hood evolves, but I'm assuming pretty soon. The Pokemon Move Recycle allows you to use an item you've already used. So we see ourselves with an item over here. We have to fight the muck here again. Oh, I see a sticker. I'm gonna get that sticker. Kinda wanna get the encounter first though. Don't attack me, guys. What did I just hear? Oh, I got 50 and that's enough? Sweet. Oh, well, hello there. It's me, Samson Oak. I see you've collected some totem stickers. You should come stop by Hey Hey Beach. Hey, hey, let's do just that in a bit. I'm going to get my encounter here. We're going to find ourselves facing off against a wild... We already have a Grimer. Toxena. She didn't make it to the muck stage. I mean, she's not gone for good, though. She, she's resting. But she's giving other Pokemon a chance to shine, so we're going to choose to wander away, or perambulate away from this encounter, see if we can get ourselves another one. Something other than Grimer. I'll take a Trubbish. That would be kind of cool. I always thought Trubbish was 
people gripe on Trubbish a bunch because they say it's just a living garbage bag. Do we have a Magnemite yet? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Alright, let's weaken this thing up with a nice physical Aqua Tail. Nicely weakened. Now I could probably even signal beam it, but I'm not going to just yet. I'm just going to try one of our good old-fashioned Pokeballs. But yeah, people were not fi uh, fond of Trubbish. I like it. It's it's cute in its own way. Unlike Magnemite, who's going to break out of the Pokeball. Let's try this again. Funny little thing, though. Okay, so the reason I like Trubbish as much as I do is because it actually kind of stems back to... There was one time my nephew and I were watching an episode of Pokemon on TV, and something that we like to do for fun sometimes is... I don't know if you guys do this out there, but if you do, let me know. Do you turn the volume down and do your own voices for the characters in the show? Like, if it's a show that you're not really, you know, I have to watch this to see what happens. It's, uh, it's kind of fun to make up your own stories and put words in their mouths and tell something different. So, this Trubbish, let me tell you, in a minute. Magnemite, the Magnet Pokemon. It's frequently the cause of power outages just like blizzards, which is why some power plants send out electrical signals that it can't stand. Well, it can't stand anyway. It's got no feet. Eh? Eh? <laughs> oh, he's so mad he didn't like that joke. All right. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, again, I'm not going to nickname it just yet, but feel free to leave a comment down below. And if you want to throw a nickname out there, suggestion for this Pokemon, by the time it comes time for me to probably use it, I will, you know, take a look at the comments and see... Which uh, Pokemon, which nickname kind of fits this Pokemon the best? Let's check the summary, though, to give you some ideas, perhaps. Magnet Pull Ability, Sonic Boom, Spark, Mirror Shot, and Metal Sound. I just go with Metal, because of Sonic Boom, Metal Sonic. Of course, Metal seems pretty uh, uncreative of a nickname, but if you want to suggest that, you're welcome to do so. Bashful Nature, a bashful metal Pokemon. I'm going to send you to the box. And away you go. So that is the 30th Pokemon I needed to power up. Oh, I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this, but I wanted to get a 30th Pokemon so I can work on, excuse me, work on getting my Pokepelago fired up a little bit more because I've been so close to getting like, you know, more berry growing, more uh, Poke Bean collecting, and opening up the Isle of, what was it, Isle of Fun, I think. Or no, Isle of Plenty? No, Isle of Plenty is the first one. I got a nugget. I think it's Isle of Fun. They go hunting through the caves, the different routes or whatever, and finding, you know, evolutionary items and all sorts of fun, cool stuff like that. So I'll be getting some new items once I take care of the Pokepelago off screen. I'm not gonna waste time in the playthrough with that. All right, we don't need to deal with this back tonight. We can wander away. I'm gonna stop using the word perambulate just because I'm so proud that I now know what it means. And we're gonna talk to first of all, see if I can get a new throwing style. Hey, listen, listen, listen. You've got to hear this. Okay. Gee, thanks. The name's Gester. Probably Jester. I know you don't know me, but you know how everybody has their favorite poses for when they throw Pokeballs and whatnot in battle? Whatnot? What else do they throw? Eh, I guess rocks, mud, bait. Those moves are called your battle style. And I'm the choreographer who came up with all those battle styles once upon a time. But I don't have a successor to pass all my knowledge on to, which is why I need you. I want you to be my battle style successor. Look, I'm your elder here and I'm asking you a favor. You can't say no. I can, it is an option, but I like getting new battle styles. All right, now I've got me a successor. Let me get started straight away with a lesson for my favorite pupil, my, your only pupil. All you have to do is copy me. Now, do what I do. One, two, three. Here's the pose. I learned the elegant style. I think that's my favorite style too. Now you can use the elegant style in battle. Just come talk to me if you want to change your battle style anytime. But that's all I'll share with you today. I'd love to give you more battle style lessons, but first got to get some more experience. When you have more experience, then come back and see me. Can and will and might do. Now, is there... Yep, we got ourselves a nice X-Speed, which I could have used fighting Howe's Electro Ball flinging Alolan Raichu. And we see Alolan Oak up here. The sea washes away everything, even your muddy feelings and emotions. Just like a good haze will clear away any stat levels that have been changed in a battle. Hello, Oak. Oh, hello, hello, Alola. 
Did you know that Alolan Grimer are in fact not native to the region at all, but are instead what we call naturalized Pokemon? There is not so much sludge and pollution for Grimer to feed on here in Alola though, so they have grown to feed on garbage instead. They do not give off a foul stench thanks to the way they contain any poisons within their bodies, but their crystals are terribly poisonous. Here, I've got something for you. Here is a present for you. Friend Ball! I'll take it. I hope you'll try to complete your Pokedex, for Rotom's sake as well. And... He disappears. He's got some mysterious powers, that Alolan form. Oh, hey, are you a trainer? No. Huh? Who are you? You need something? No, do you need something? That's usually my line, except I never speak. Try, let's try that again. No, okay. Well, weird. All right, so let's deal with the Alolan Muck, if at all possible. All right, I'd say we're about done here, yeah? Let's call it a day and get on home. Jane. Hey, what are you doing out here, kid? This is a restricted area. We're working here. Seriously, boy? Aren't you a Mali native? We're famous for our hospitality. Duh. And kids need to explore and see the world. How else are they going to learn? I swear. Yes, father. Er, I mean, sir. Yes, sir. If that's what you really want, then I will tell this random treasure, pa treasure passer. There we go. About what it is we do here. This is where we take care of all the garbage produced in the Alola region, young man. You bring it all here? Huh, does Mantine surf that? We janitors work together with our Pokemon towards this goal, in fact. The garbage that the human workers gather is consumed by muck and grimer, like this one here. Our president here beside me has a muck that can eat ten tons of rubbish in a single day. Though, me and grimer here are still just temporary contract workers. But isn't that an island challenge amulet you have there? I took on the trials myself when I was a kid, though it was a bit too much for me, and so I actually ended up giving up right away. Right away? What? I mean, yeah, Lima can be a bit of a jerk. Look here, kid. Seems to me that my mucks had a bit too much to eat today. How about you join me in a battle and provide it with a bit of exercise to aid the old indigestion? I'd be... okay to do that. I don't know about happy. Good. You've got chutzpah, my friend. Then let's get this thing happening. Did his voice stay consistent during that? I think I lost track of it very early on. Anyway, Janitor Sean is going to let his muck shine in the moonlight of Valola. As we move on from that failed attempt at a pun, I'm wearing my nice hero cap in the background. Level 28, Muck. Can we deal with you? Oh, wait a minute. Let's just turn you into water type. That'd be cool. So now, we could signal beam you, we could... Let's do a move, brick break you. You don't get stabbed from that, but our special defense partially falls. Not too happy with that, but we could confuse you. Also, now that you are water type, we can bring in our Dartrix. Which we're probably going to... No, we're probably not going to, because you are hitting us with a poison move. So who else wants to come in and deal with this thing? We've got ourselves an option in Ghosty. We've got ourselves actually candy. Good combo here. We're going to be able to Toxic and Venom Drench this. Or no, Venom Shock this thing. Venom Drench is a completely other move. Acid Spray does nothing? Yeah, four. Now, it could have Bite, Crunch, something like that. So, am I worried? Not particularly. Let's Toxic this thing. A little bit of lag there. So that brings me to an interesting thing to mention. I think I mentioned this before, but, uh, come on. My nephew got the Switch for Christmas. I don't have a Switch of my own just yet, but I do want to pick it up eventually, because I think it's been confirmed at this point that Game Freak has said the 3DS, they've reached the limit of what they can do with this hardware. This, this, you know, the equipment, right? So they're going to move on to uh, making a game for the Switch eventually. I definitely want to get a Switch for whenever that Pokemon game comes out, whatever it's going to be, because I gotta play more Pokemon games, you know, I gotta keep it, keep the adventure going forward. So, at some point, I do plan on doing that, getting myself a Switch. Eventually, when a new Pokemon game comes out for it, I'll be snatching that up as well, and continuing our adventures here on the channel. I was exercising to aid digestion, but you came at me full on. I remember that was a lot harder in my first playthrough. I'm pretty sure it was. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. This next fight's gonna be easy, though. Heh, <laughs> not too shabby. Just like I'd figured. You've got something in you, kid. It's called chutzpah. Amazing! You even beat my fa- I mean, my boss's muck. 
What are you doing standing there like a lump? You're up next, you useless dullard! What? what? Me? Me and Grimer? There's no way we could win against this kid! You see? It's just like you did with your trials when you were a kid. The moment something starts to look tough, you give a cry and you run off. You give up! And you're supposed to be my son. Harsh. How can I leave this plant to you if you never learn the value of a bit of hard work? I can't ever leave things in your hands if you don't give me reason to trust you can handle it. Father. I mean, boss. Fine. We'll do it. I will not run away anymore. I will give this everything that I've got. Give me a minute. No, I'm good. Let's do it. I am a man now. Just you watch, father. I mean, sir. So you're a man by picking on a kid. Is that what I'm gathering from this? Let's go chase. That's me with an E. Interesting. All right, so we got a Grimer. This ain't gonna be nowhere near as bad, I don't think. Watch me be uh, completely underestimating its, prop Ooh, its possibilities. It is a level 30. Let's soak it. And water type once again. So you have acid spray as well. We got knockoff. We got Waterium Z, so. Ah, and the poison touch comes through. Excellent. Okay, let's get our turkey out of here. Uh. Hmm. An idea. Go for acid spray. Wait, never mind. What am I thinking? I'm stupid. I was thinking Storm Drain made all special attacks get absorbed. I'm a dumb. Minimize. I got an idea. Well, let's just see what uh, Beauty Fin can do here. We do have Aerial Ace on our Crobat, which we're going to bring in right now because I'm not messing with this Minimize. So it is Water type, which means we could technically try to... Wait, we could poison it. I'm going to do that first. We're going to Candy and we're going to get the poison and then we'll go into our Aerial Ace and Echo. Taking four Pokemon to deal with... Uh, four Pokemon to deal with the Grimer, where it only took two to take on the Muck. Isn't that something? Of course, Toxic never misses. Like, I don't know if it says it never misses or if it's just fully accurate. Because, like, would Minimize still cause possible miss, you know? I hope not. I hope... Because, like, if Toxic's going to hit things that are in the air, which it does if a Poison type uses it, you'd think that it could never miss at all, right? It's so weird, even if something has dug underground. So, just think about that. Nothing is really safe from... Oh, my skull plans, man! Nothing's really safe from uh, Salazzle's Toxic. Because whether you're a Poison-type, Steel-type, that doesn't matter. If you're in the air, underground, underwater, boom, you're still poisoned. It's kind of cool. Poison Fan. We do resist, and it's not Stab anymore. So, my question to pose to you folks out there is actually being posed to me. When did I start recording? I think I know when we can go into it. I think there's still like a half hour left. I gotta start like a timer. That would be a great idea. Why don't I think of that? Father, that was my best shot! It actually gave me a little bit of a run for my money though. Don't count yourself out, bud. Blast it all! You! Uh, I'm sorry, Father. I really am just a weakling. You're hired! F father? Even Grimer's like, uh? I'm not your father. I'm your boss, and I'm saying that you are hired, boy. From this day forth, I'm making you the head of the plan, and I won't hear another word of complaint about it from you. What? You saw that this trainer was stronger than you or even me, and you still, you and your Grimer still went up against it with everything that you had in you. That's what I've always wanted to see from you. That kind of persistence and drive and foolhardiness because he kind of knew he was doomed. And that's why you and Grimer, that's why you're going to take over for me. F thank you, sir. Father, sir. I mean, Mr. Former President, sir. Daddy. I threw the daddy in. Sorry for using you to teach my boy a lesson. But when I saw that island challenge amulet you had there, it just hit me, you know? Take this for your troubles. It may be twisted, but it's not garbage. I could give that to, uh, nobody. We have no psychic moves. But it's an item. I'll take it. Now that I've got my successor sorted out, I can finally retire to a life of peace and quiet. I think I could trust my boy's crew to keep on eating up all of Alola's garbage from now on. Yes, sir. Yes, you can. 
I don't want to question their ways, but that doesn't really... I mean, I know it's a necessary task to be done, but it doesn't seem like the most glorious job ever. You're eating trash. Anyway, recycling plant, even the building itself is recycled. Regularly or just the one time? Alright, I want to go heal. Let's fly back to Mali City. And then... I'm going to head over to Route 10 and find some random stuffle that have been gone astray. Get another encounter. Yeah, so we have the Magnemite capture. Feel free to nickname that, folks. I've got to get a uh, encounter on Route 10. And... We can't get an encounter here in the city, can we? I don't think so. I don't think there's a spot to fish or anything, so... No encounter, I believe, for Mali City. But Route 10 definitely has an encounter, and... I can't wait to get down to Route 12. See what that next batch of move tutors are gonna give us. And if Pony Island will have a, some move tutors themselves. Because you'd think that each of the four islands would have a move tutor. Maybe they're in one of the boats there at Seafold Village. Time will tell. Hello, sir. I'm your friendly neighborhood policeman. I can't get enough of giving people directions. So I'm a young trial-going trainer. I've got some directions for you. If you head straight up from here, you'll reach the library. Go to the left, you'll find Route 10. Head down, and you'll get to Route 11. Do you want to get a Route 11 encounter, guys? No, I'm going to save that for the live stream. Depending on how long this uh, trial takes us to get through, actually. I don't know if you'd describe the bird Pokemon in Alola as being comfortable around people, or just plain aggressive. That's kind of similar to, uh... I think I was talking about this in the XD Gale of Darkness video yesterday, but I did some more pigeon feeding while I was uptown before the storm, the blizzard hit today, but I'll talk more about that in just a little bit. Oh, looks like you're a trial goer, eh? Then I've got a favor to ask of you. I'd be happy to help. Route 10 here is long and wide, and it's a great place to let your Pokemon play a bit. My stuff all hadn't been getting much exercise lately, so I let them out of their balls to have them run around a bit. But they haven't come back. I want to go look for them, but it's hard for an old lady like me to traipse all around. If you find one of my little stuffle, you just tell them to come back to me. They're impish creatures, but smart as a cookie and with noses that could sniff out anything. They'll find their way back home to me. Will you help me find my stuffle around, around, along, sorry, Route 10? Sure. I've got eight stuffle lost out there somewhere. Maybe they're hiding. My question! How can you carry eight Pokemon at a time? I can't do that. I mean, technically, I guess I had seven. If you consider the left Pokeball, which kind of threw us for a loop, we thought I was, or I thought I was losing my uh, Robin Hoot. Route 10, a wooded path where Pokemon live. So let's find these Stuffle. No luck. What's in this tree, though? Fero? I couldn't see the shadow. I pulled back too far. So wait, I just realized this counts as our encounter, doesn't it? It's a wild encounter on Route 10. Right. So this is going to be our Skarmory. So that's two Steel types we're adding to the... Like, nope, I'm not going to overstate it. We have to make the capture first before saying we're adding it to the team. Let's Aqua Tail this thing. Being swift. You got no special attack stat. Go ahead. Waste your turn. Boy, that's some good defense. <coughs> Excuse me. And a Fury attack. A flurry of Fury is coming our way. Only three. We're good. Now, a non-stab Brick Break, I think, is the best way to go here. Throwing out some spikes. That is fine. I can switch into... Why do they all land to the side like that? But I can switch into one of our flying types to be immune to that. <coughs> and again, I didn't get myself a thing of water. I should... Okay, I gotta set timers, I gotta get water. Just I gotta be prepared for these things better from now on. Pokeball, do your stuff. Feel free to start thinking of nicknames right now, people, because we're making the capture in three, two, one, and done. Got it. Skarmory, I thought was gonna break it, but we did get Skarmory. So check the Pokedex data to throw your, uh, for some ideas your way for what we can nickname this. What I'll probably do, try to have them all nicknamed before the live stream happens. <clears throat> Skarmory. Now, do we get the red background for this? Because it's like, it doesn't evolve? No, come on. Oh, well. Skarmory, the armor bird Pokemon. The wing feathers it sheds can be processed and made into knives whose sharpness is recognized by the finest of chefs. Nice. I guess. Huh, what would be a good name? Well, I already have a name for you in Pokemon Go. 
but I'm not going to say, I'm going to let you guys decide what to nickname this thing. So again, like I say, feel free to leave comments, and I'll update the nickname before the live stream happens. If we do use this Pokemon, basically. So, it is a gentle Pokemon, which is special defense up, physical defense down. It's not the best, but it's maybe kind of trying to help balance it with the two defenses, so that's kind of okay. Fury attack, faint, swift, and spikes. So, to the PC with you, my new friend. And that's another Pokemon added to our PC so I can build up the uh, Pokepelago Islands. Very cool. And, oh, it dropped something. We got a Resist Wing. That could build up our defense. It adds one IV for your, uh, one EV for defense. I was walking by that tree and a Pokemon landed right on my head. I don't know if I should call that luck or what. Um, it depends on what Pokemon, I guess. A wooded path where Pokemon lives. Did I already read that? I already read that. Hello, Stuffles, where is that? We got a fight up here. See if we can get an evolution for our Psyduck. The ridiculous power at the scene of a fire. Oh, you're gonna have water types, aren't you? You think firemen would have fire types? Although probably not necessarily. Let's okay. So back in Gen 1, they had a trainer class known as Burglar. What I don't understand, the burglar type was known for using fire Pokemon. Does that really make any sense? I don't know what the connection there is. Okay, we're not going to soak this thing because that's pointless. We're going to signal beam it. And what does this have against us? We can learn things like... Well, we can learn all the beam attacks, which is pretty cool. And uh, it can get bullet seed, which I just now realized I should probably switch out. Because that still did some pretty good damage. Okay. Beauty fan. We've got ghosty. So this thing can learn aurora beam and ice beam. That's not good. Water attacks are not good. Again, ice and ice. I think Echo can do this though. 33, the level. We can we can do this. Echo, you got this. No Aurora Beam, please. I can also learn Rock Blast though. Oh, and it has Side Beam, which it just showed us. Whoops on me. But no confusion means we are fine. We get Giga Drain. I took the Miracle Seed from you, didn't I? I could probably give it back. That was a critic. Oh, that's the Scope Lens. Okay, never mind. Forget the Miracle Seed. Critical is awesome. Aurora Beam, same power, I think, as uh, the Psy Beam. Let's go Aerial Ace, definite knockout. Slice, slice. And Calamari is served. Going back to the whole thing about sushi and me not really being a big fan of sushi. Why did I make a sushi reference? I don't know. First thing that came to mind. I lost. I was extinguished. There we go, level 33, another evolution, Turkey, going into Golduck, we're just filling out this Pokedex. So of the current team, the only Pokemon left that can evolve would be Robin Hoot. Ghosty to evolve into Trevenant is a trade evolution, so she's as high as we're going to get her for the playthrough. But Turkey is here in final form. To be able to can evolve you into Golduck Break. Move all your energies around for free. Alright, let's add Golduck's data to the Pokedex and see what this champion swimmer has going for it. So that's what it references before in the Pokedex. Let's see if it's something new and creepy. Golduck, the dark Pokemon. Even fast swimming fish Pokemon can be disabled by Golduck. It brings them to a standstill and seizes them. So, kind of the same thing as a fast swimmer. Check out these animations. Oh, smack down. And Hydro Pump. And that's it. All right, so Turkey probably still maintains the same ability as well, Cloud9. Very cool. My surprise when Remoraid evolved into Octillery, the world is full of wonder. Yes, let's get a photo of Turkey. we get Route 10 as the background. This is just the episode of Photos, isn't it? Which thumbnail do I use now? I don't know. All right, so, background. Give us Route 10. Why do you not give us Route 10? No, what... What determines if you get the background or not? I don't know. Like, I suppose... This probably looks just the same as Route 8, you know, the road. So maybe that is why they don't give you a Route 10? Best I can figure. Alright, let's go into the photo shoot. And I want to do... I'll do the water. I'll do the show off. Showing off of our gold duck. Alright, let's freeze ourselves in the proper animation. There we go. Now, let's angle the camera. Up. 
That looks pretty good there. I like the way that I'm facing here, too. I'm not really looking at the camera. It's like I'm looking off to an audience that's somewhere else there. All right. Now, our gold up, we want to face the camera. Hang on. Right there. Now we got to move you. you got to rotate you a little bit more, though. You're not looking straight at the camera just yet. There we go. And let's move you again. Hardly move. What? Okay, that's good. All right. Now then, what animation do we want you to do? That's kind of cool looking. There's that hand slap. I didn't even think to check for Salazzle's uh, refresh animation, though. All you got there. I want to try to get that one, the last one that we just saw. There we go. Let's pick the best one of these. I kind of like the way he's kind of leaning down here. I'll grab these two. Maybe that one too. I'll grab them all, those three. That's good. We'll save these up. I probably should have moved the camera a little bit better to zoom in on us, though. Uh, bear with me. I want to try that again. I want to move the camera. I didn't even think of that. Okay, so focus... Oh, focus more towards the Pokemon, I guess. And... Lower it down a bit. See if we can zoom in. Because he's gonna duck, right? So let's try this. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. So do it again. Yes. All right, so those three photos I took, just wasting space on the uh, SD card. I think we might have a thumbnail. Oh, wait, no, choose, there we go. We might have ourselves a thumbnail with these folks. We're good, all right, we're gonna take those two. Not bad, I really like these photos. They're very cool. It's too bad you don't get ribbons or anything. Like that. I was talking to my nephew about uh, things that I'd like to see in future Pokemon games. Well, he was saying how it'd be interesting to see if uh, Game Freak would try something different than Pokemon. Like, you know, I, th I think he said that they made different games in the past. Another egg hatch. We have no eggs. Thanks, Rotom. I'll take it. When we do eventually start breeding Pokemon, they're going to come in handy, of course. Helps to hatch eggs. My su oh, my surprise. Blah, blah, blah. Um, hey, Stuffle. What are you growling at me for? I don't think that told you to or told me to find you. But uh, yeah, he was saying how it'd be cool if they introduced like a new kind of game in a uh, Pokemon, like uh, or not Pokemon, but like if Game Freak made a different kind of game. And I was saying, well, it'd be cool if they made something like a sports game or something. But I would like to see a Pokemon-related sports game, mainly because I would like to see, uh, for example, maybe hey, stuff. We'll get out of here. Uh, ribbons you can get for winning sports events. Like, they almost had this with the big and small stadiums in the Unova region, but not quite. I would like to see some sort of, uh, like, let's say soccer, for example. A kicking move would help your Pokemon better in soccer, you know? Hey, another Stuffle. Get it out of here. So, stuff like that. Or, like, you know, baseball. Maybe a move like Brutal Swing would give you, like, an instant home run or something like that. So, naturally, some Pokemon would perform better in certain events. Like, if you can't learn a kicking move, you wouldn't be very good at a soccer game. But that's just kind of uh, part of the course. Is that Pineco shows up? You're new to this region. I've never seen this Pokemon. I used to never find them in Pokemon Go, and then I finally got enough candy to evolve them into a uh, fortress. Then I started seeing them everywhere. Isn't that interesting how that happens? All right, Aerial Ace, almost level up for Echo here too. Oh wait, don't blow up. Thank you. So. They could blow up, is the problem. What I'm planning to do... Switch into my ghost type. Just to be safe. Ghosty! It's up to you, buddy. Get in here, girl. See if we can deal with the... We can burn them both, actually. If we do burn one, they're not going to call for help anymore, which is kind of good. And here come the spikes. It's where they're all landing off to the side like that, right? And they almost rapid spun away their own spikes. What is that? Okay, let's Shadow Claw the Newcomer. Man, those defenses. 
and level 2 spikes. Spikes is an interesting move. The more you lay down up to three layers, the more damage your Pokemon takes as they come in. Of course, things like uh, Rapid Spin gets rid of them. So, see, level three spikes, that's the most damage we can take if we switch something in. Of course, a Flying type or a Levitate Pokemon are immune to that kind of damage. Let's try this. See what Bulldoze can do. They, res they resist the, the ground moves, but uh, if I can take both out at once, which I won't do, because obviously that first one has a lot of defense. Well, here's what I have for an idea. Check this out. I'm going to Will-O-Wisp this one. Oh, you're gonna vibe now, are you? I've always thought Pineco is a really cool Pokemon. I look at it, and my first thought is it has to be a grass type, you know, because it's like it's a plant. At least it looks like a plant. But I guess maybe not. Now I just noticed that burn does not do as much as I thought it did. That being the case, I'm just going to bulldoze again. I'm trying to see if I can get both of them down at the same time. And now we're going to find out, does Bide hit ghosts? Because I completely forgot that this thing was Biding. Okay, one more bulldoze takes out that second kind, though. I'm just going for it. Let's do the damage. Now, does Bide hit us? Didn't think so. Alright. So, it ignores the defensiveness of Rock-type and Steel-type, but it still can't get past the whole immunity of Ghost-types to normal moves. Good to know. And Pine Co. is done. And Echo levels up already. You need some care. You're all covered in dust from those bulldozes. Ghosty, no. It's only two dusts. I guess that's not the worst thing. So what was I talking about? Yeah, the idea with like uh, new ribbons for sporting events. It would be cool if uh, like uh, they kind of started doing this in even Heart Gold Soul Silver. They had the Pokeathlon, I think it was called, and your Pokemon could like you know uh, different Pokemon had different uh, ratings and speed and uh, jump and stuff like that. I think it was so. They could have combined that with the whole ribbon thing. I'm just a fan of ribbons in general. I love commemorating my Pokemon with how far they've been and what they've accomplished with their various illustrious careers throughout the many regions of Pokemon. That's why I wasn't a big fan of Gen 5. I've mentioned this before, and I will mention it again as soon as the Gen 5 playthrough kicks off on the channel, as soon as we're done through uh, the Gen 4, obviously, because that's how the numbers work, right? Four, sorry, five comes after four. I'm a professor of numbers, you know? Anywho, yeah, like, they didn't introduce any ribbons in Gen 5, which was really bad because they didn't even have a champion, Elite 4 ribbon. How are you ever going to know that I completed Gen 5? Just by me telling you, of course. Kelpsy Berry, Tomato Berry, and I'm calling a Greppa Berry for some reason. No, but a Tomato Berry. So we did just level up... Echo, which I forgot to maneuver. Let's go. Let's go, Ghosty. Let's bust some Pokemon down with our Ghost type. Are you a trainer? No. Young boy with an island challenge amulet. Your Pokemon looking a bit tired. Nice. I was just thinking that myself. Rotom didn't even need to tell me this time. Your Pokemon are healthy. So that was three stuff we found so far, I think. Let's find the rest. Now, we might be able to make it all the way up to the top of the mountain by the end of the episode. We still got about 10 minutes, I think it is. Again, I need to set timers for these. Okay, stuff on number four. We ran off in a hurry. There's one hiding behind the sign. Little guy. Oh, I was going to tell you about the whole uh, the aggressive birds type thing when I was feeding some pigeons. I was walking around today. Move icons where you want with the X. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're just right in the open. You're not even hiding. Is that six? I think that's six. If I'm right, there's only two more. Oh, you are a trainer. Were you bothered by this beauty strolling along or by my Pokemon? Neither. I was bothered by your interruption of me telling my story. So, it's kind of cool and in a way kind of not cool that the pigeons in the city, and I'm sure this is true in any city, like, you know, a big city where the pigeons coexist every day with humans. 
that, like, I went into the local market to buy a bag of sunflower seeds because I just thought, I just want to give these, these pigeons something. They look like they're hungry, you know, there's not a lot of food out, everything's covered in snow. I just thought, <clears throat> I wouldn't feel right just leaving and not doing what I can for them. So I bought them some seeds, came back, started throwing handfuls down, but I even had it, like, I would hold a bunch of seeds in my hand. Speaking of seeds, let's go leech seed. Hold them in my hand and hold the hand out. And I have my other hand with it too, like so there was like a, a bowl sort of thing. And the pigeons were actually landing on my hands and my arms and my wrists and stuff to eat the seeds like that. Is that the most sanitary thing to have done? Probably not, because people always say, you know, pigeons are swarming with disease. But I mean, there's germs everywhere. I'm not super concerned about that. Probably should be. That might be why I get uh, sick sometimes and get colds. Ignoring that though, uh, I just thought it was cool that they would be so used to people that they would eat out of my hand like that. So as I say, it's kind of cool in a way that they feel that they can rely on people to help them. But also there's the downside where, you know, if somebody is sort of like a, a bad person, that they might trust them and walk up to the person and they might, uh, the, the person might, you know, hurt them or something like that. So it's like, it's a, what do we call it? Catch-22, I think. Is that what a catch-22 means? I would check my phone, but it's been messing up, so I have it turned off. I would have okay Google. But it's a good and bad, I guess. All right, as I rambled, Ghosty takes down the Flappy and healed up nicely from Leech Seed. Almost leveled up, too. You bother me. <laughs> Was it my beauty that bothered you or my Pokemon? Speaking of Pokemon, oh, you're dusted up again? I guess I am a ghost duster. Let's get you all cleaned up and get you a quick Pokebean. There we go. When are we going to max out your affection? She's going to be pretty close. It'd be cool to see her evolve into Trevenant, but... I kind of like... I'm the kind of person that doesn't always need to evolve their Pokemon, because I think Phantom is a cute little Pokemon as she is here. Uh, same with my Alolan Sandshrew in Moon. I remember... I think the King of Litten said at one point he could have helped me evolve Igaloo up into Alolan Sandslash, but I'm like, I am never evolving Igaloo. She's too adorable as she is. Telling someone their Pokemon are cute is a good way to strike up a conversation. I'll keep that in mind as I get attacked by... Is that a Pineco again? Indeed it were. So let's do the Leech Seed and... Actually, let's do the Will-O-Wisp and Leech Seed combo in that order. Keep this thing from calling for help. I mean, the chance of a Shiny showing up is kind of nice. But the uh, longer it takes to get through these battles the last time we have to advance the story. And I want to try to do that, because I want to get to that Route 12 beach spot to see if I can finally teach Ice Punch to my Igaloo, as well as, you know, other things. Um, something that I think is cool is the fact that some of these, uh, these move tutors are here. I've had Pokemon with moves from earlier generations that they can't relearn, so I've been hesitant to have them forget them. For good example, my Hypno, the brain, has Telekinesis. It was a TM back in Gen 5, and... He can't relearn that, except now he probably can because Telekinesis is a move tutor attack on, uh, I think it was Akala Island. So I'm looking forward to the time when I can start switching up his moveset a little bit more. I'm wondering if other Pokemon will have stuff like that too. So I don't even know what all the move tutor attacks are. I'm certainly looking forward to that. And I like, so something I said is I don't really like Gen 5 as much. Something that I didn't like what Gen 5 did was to make TMs multi-use. It just seemed like, you know, people who would hack their games to give themselves infinite TMs, it felt like this was a way of catering, not so much to them, but to the people who don't hack. It's like, well, we're going to give you the same advantage that these people, this unfair advantage that these people have. So, I felt it wasn't right for them to do that, but as soon as Gen 6 came along and they kept the whole TMs or multi-use thing, I was like, I'm okay with it now, because Gen 5 did it first. So, I'm kind of hypocritical in a way, I guess. Oh, you're not a battler? Buses can get a whole lot of people to where they need to go all at once. Though I'd kind of like to see a whole herd of ride Pokemon like Tauros stampeding together. It's possible. So, oh, there's another Stuffle in the grass. I saw it. Sniff, sniff, grr. You do realize your grr isn't really scary, right? You're too adorable for that Stuffle. Go. Be free. And this last guy wants a battle. I guess... We'll fight him. And then we're going to probably end the episode. I'll save the bus ride. Wee-oo, wee-oo. 
My impression of a siren is pretty good, eh? I'm pretty good at Pokemon battles, too. Let's find out together. Next time on... Right now, actually. I'm just kidding. There's a guy. Heyo! Police Officer Mitchell. You got a Growlithe? What a guess! Man! What, wouldn't it have been cool if there was, like, an Alolan Growlithe, which was, like, a Dalmatian, and it was actually Water-type? That would have been cool. Has there been a Dalmatian Pokemon? I don't think there has been. That's interesting. Now, we are weak to fire, but we do have Bulldoze. And we have Eviolite, too, which is good, because we're about to... Oh, don't burn me. That was a critical. All right, since we can't take this down in one more hit, we're going to switch it. I mean, the speed drop, we probably could have outsped and gotten the win, but... <laughs> Why'd you have to hit me that hard? All right, beauty fan. It's good. Let's teach this thing about critical hits. First of all, you don't land them on me. Second of all, we land them when we call for it, when we want to, when we get them. And I want to get a critical water pulse on you, my little red friend. Just like that. Whatever. I don't care. I just want to knock it out. Okay, and level 33 for Go See. You're something else. You're better at Pokemon battles than I am. That is true, and thank you. Oh man, what? Oh, one bulldoze did that? Reminds me when I was training my uh, Lycan Rock Prowl back in Moon. Like every single time she would use Rock Slide, she would get covered in dust. It's like that's a little excessive. I mean, I could use a different move. I could also try moving the beans. There we go. But I guess that's going to round things off here. I'll go back and talk to the lady with her stuffle at the start of the live stream tomorrow. It's around 7 p.m. Atlantic time. Check, uh, I guess, check Google to see exactly what time that, it, that would be for uh, your time zone. And feel free to tune in for that. I liked the last live stream I did on New Year's Day evening. People were there waiting for me to show up. So I really like scheduling these live streams. I'll probably wait and uh, schedule the day before, because I've had this next one coming up scheduled for like four days. I don't think I need to have that much lead into it. I'm still trying to learn how things flow well with the uh, live streams and stuff. I want to put a siren on Tauros and make it exclusive to police officers. But with... What do you say? Oh! Don't worry, we're good, but thanks. <laughs> he looks all sad. Anyway, we're going to save it up here. And that is going to be a wrap for today's adventure of Pokemon Ultra Sun. I want to say, as always, thanks for checking this video out, folks. If you enjoyed it, of course, feel free to leave a like down below and share it with any of your friends who might want to check out my particular adventures in the Alola region round two. And if you want to see the full playlist, there's a link down there in the description to the playlist. Check that out and get caught up on all the adventures thus far, as well as some more videos. If you, check the, uh, if you check the outro, you'll see some more videos such as Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness, which is nearing completion, and we'll have other videos like Pokemon TCG coming back on a regular basis, Pokemon News Update video thingies on Tuesdays coming probably next week, I'm hoping, and just more good Pokemon content, which you can subscribe to the channel for and get that on a daily basis from Professor Chaz. With that, we are done. I am signing off. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll catch you next time.